This is breaking news. A former Area 51 and CIA employee implies that the Tic Tac UFO, having to do with the Nimitz UFO encounters from 2004, that that event was a classified test. This is on Out of Minds 2, today's article. In an article released by The War Zone on November 25, 2019, Two men who worked on classified advanced aerospace programs back in the 60s weigh in on the recent Navy UFO, the Tic Tac Encounters. T.D. Barnes started working on Black Op projects back in 1954 when he worked on the world's first operational surface-to-air missile system, SAM for short. In the early 60s, he worked for the CIA as a special project engineer at Area 51, working on the A-12 spy plane, Project Oxcart. CIA developed the high, highly secret A-12 Oxcart as the U-2 spy plane successor, intended to meet the nation's need for a very fast, very high-flying reconnaissance aircraft that could avoid Soviet air defenses. It became operational November 12, 1965. Not only did the A-2 provide its worth during its short operational life, but the overall Oxcart project produced the second longest lasting aerial reconnaissance platform in U.S. intelligence history, the SR-71. Barnes states that the CIA was worried that a new highly advanced Soviet Union radar system would be able to detect the A-12 when it flew missions over their airspace. The CIA then developed a program called Palladium. Palladium caused false targets to pop up on the Soviet Union's new radar system. The 2010 Mirage Men book, Mark Pilkington, discussed how Dr. Leon Davidson thought some UFO radar appearances were man-made, created for covert counterintelligence purposes. Pilkington discussed the CIA project that created radar ghosts, quote-unquote, Project Palladium, and how it might have been used to also spoof UFOs. In this article, Barnes stated, quote, Using an electronic-laden C-97 EC-97G, we could make Soviet radars believe they were tracking a number of aerial objects. This is what Barnes mused. He said, at one point, a Russian MIG, a MiG-15 pilot, even claimed he could see the target and had a look a lock on it. Concerning the Tic Tac UFO sightings by Navy Super Hornet fighter pilots, he said, I don't have the answers to what the Navy aviators saw, but in my mind, I think we are doing it again. Now here is where it gets interesting. On November 7th, the War Zone published an article on the Navy's latest Revolution in Electronic Warfare, the netted emulation of multi-element signature against integrated sensors, or NEMESIS for short. The U.S. Navy has been quietly developing what could be one of the most important, transformative, and fascinating advances in naval combat and warfare in general in years. This new electronic warfare system of systems has been clandestinely refined over the last five years, and judging from the Navy's own budgetary documents, it may be operational soon, if it isn't already. This secretive new electronic warfare ecosystem, quote unquote, is known as the netted emulation of multi-element signature against integrated sensors, or nemesis for short. It's clear that for years, the Navy has been developing and integrating multiple types of unmanned vehicles, shipboard and submarine systems, and countermeasures and electronic warfare payloads and communication technologies to give it the ability to, pro to project what is, in essence, phantom fleets of aircraft, ships, and submarines. These realistic-looking false signatures and decoys have the ability to appear seamlessly across desperate and geologically separate enemy sensor systems located both above and below the ocean's floor, the ocean's surface, 
this is according to the drive, uh, it's not out of mind. Okay, that has to do now, uh, this article is talking about the radar and sensor system signatures. But what about the actual UFOs that the pilots have seen with their own eyes when they were flying for their training exercises and drills off the west coast of California, San Diego, California? the uh, Nimitz encounters. Uh, there were times where pilots, after they had landed, after their training, their drills, said that they had also almost crashed with them. So there were not phantom ghost uh, signals on radar and sensor systems. These actual uh, uh, vehicles were up there. These, these uh, unidentified flying objects were real because they were viewed, they were sighted by the pilots. So this, okay, article states that they may have had a, some kind of a, a, a very advanced system showing blips on a radar and sensor systems. That's one thing, but it still does not explain the fact that the pilots did have UFO encounters because they saw them with their own eyes. Now, this is one of the uh, videos taken, that was one of the videos taken from uh, an infrared camera that was locked onto the actual UFO and this is um, an illustration of what the UFO was like when uh, it was hovering above the uh, the sea above the ocean and then it went under the surface of the ocean and what happened was that other little UFOs came over and were above the submerged UFO just above the water level. So the, this, these are the things that the pilots reported seeing, that uh, they were very quickly, uh, quickly, almost at the, that, at the speed of a thought. Um, the way they were maneuvering was uh, not possible for people to maneuver in crafts that fast because of uh, the uh, gravity forces, the forces of gravity, the fact that we don't even have technology that can uh, have such anti-gravity craft. Um, and also they were going underneath the sea as fast as they were going in the air. So these are things that we are not capable of. No country on earth is capable of having speeds like this. So it's not just the things that um, were appearing on radar, it's, it's also the objects that the pilots themselves were seeing. This is one of them here. And they also took a film of this because they locked into it and had the infrared film to show us. This is an image from the uh, DOD, Department of Defense. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.